in people's lives, there's only maybe a half dozen, seven, eight categories that really matter. Most people, you know, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. They know more about this celebrity going in and out of rehab than they do about their own personal development. But I look at and say, if you look at your body, without that, everything else is out the door. You don't want to be richest man in the graveyard. That's not going to do it. If there is energy, if there's vitality, if there's strength, it's going to show up in your relationship. It's going to show up in your business, it's show up in your life. That's an area you got to master. You can't dabble. It's too important. Emotions are everything. I mean, you got a ton of money, you got everybody loves you, and your primary emotions are pissed off and frustrated, then your life's pissed off and frustrated. It doesn't matter if you got a billion dollars or a million people loving you, your life is not great. Relationships, intimate relationships especially. It's where the most juice in life comes from, it's where the most pain comes from most people. It's worth mastering instead of dabbling. You know, really looking at what are you gonna do with your time? and mastering your time. Instead of having a checklist, you cross it all off, you can mistake movement for achievement. I, I wanna squeeze out of that time what matters, that creates value for me and for everyone I care about and love. What about your career or your business and the mastery of that instead of dabbling? Most, most businesses are dabblers. That's why they don't make it. 96%, you know, in any 10 year period of time, 4% make it. That doesn't even mean they're profitable. And it does not mean they're enjoying themselves, all right? Or they're getting anybody else to feel good. Really mastering money so that it's, it's not a question in your life. You can do and be and give and share as much as you want. You're not stressed about it. You live in a place of abundance. And then spiritually, really, I think, now I don't tell people what to believe spiritually, but I believe that ultimately, whatever you believe, you gotta live it, and it should lead to growing and giving. If you're growing, you feel alive. If you're giving, you feel 10 times more alive. And I think if someone can celebrate and give, then that spiritual state. So to me, those are the areas I look at mastering. You know, business, for sure, but it's the areas of life that matter most. And most of where we spend our time doesn't make people feel fulfilled. That's why the average person is not fit and healthy. The average person is not in a relationship where they have tremendous passion. They, you know, I'm not a dummy, I'm not a positive thinker, I know the truth. The average person is not successful in business. The average person is not earning what they wanna earn. But you know what? Very few people have those things, but a few do. A few are happy, fulfilled, spiritually alive, financially strong, their business is growing, they have passionate love affairs, and I'm obsessed with finding the few who do and find out what they do different and teach them to everybody. Everyone's gonna measure themselves differently because everyone values things differently. Some people value success or significance. Some people value love more. Some value just basic levels of certainty. Um, so when I look at the specific metrics, I really look at uh, metrics of what are the things that need to be measured to know if your life is gonna work or not. So I look at it as our whole lives are guided moment to moment by the state we're in. Learning how to change your state, not bullshit, not fake, but to go from pissed off, frustrated, freaked out, to back in your center, or creative, or uh, determined, or something that's gonna move you forward, it's gonna create a better quality of life for you and others, that's a critical skill set. So moment to moment, our life's controlled by our states. Yep. You know, if you're in an angry state, you're gonna respond differently than if you're feeling playful. But what controls those states long-term is your model of the world, your worldview. And I look at that as having, as a metric, three things that I look at. I look to see first, what are the targets you're after? The target is, everybody has, the, everyone has different goals and dreams and desires. But as I traveled around the world to 100 countries, I started going, holy shit, I'm seeing the same problems What's underneath it? I began to see that there are these same six human needs that we all have, the same needs. We all have a need for certainty, that we can avoid pain and we can have some pleasure, some comfort. We all need uncertainty. We need variety or we feel dead inside. If you're totally certain you're bored, if you have total variety, you're like freak out. And it's not a balance, it's learning which of these you need more as a person. Everyone's developed a different set of values in that area. Um, need of, the need for significance feel unique, special, important, the need to feel loved, the need to grow, and the need to contribute. Some people value certainty at the top of their list. That's their center of their target. I don't want to do anything unless I know it's going to work. I don't want to do anything unless it's the same. If you change anything, they freak out. If certainty is the number one thing on your list, everyone has the same needs, but if it's number one, I know how your life's going to be. I can predict the direction of your life and therefore the destination to some extent. If you're driven by love first, you want certainty too, but love is higher, you're gonna behave very differently than if you're driven by significance. I have to be the one. So I look to see which of those needs are the top two on your list because they control your life. Yep. The two that most people have, 90% of the planet, if you said, of all these needs, which one do you really focus on most day to day? Everybody wants love, but what do you focus on? Most people focus on 
being significant, we live in a Facebook world where people fake their life, put new filters, make it look different than it really is, tell stories that you know are totally full of it to make themselves look good. Because we live in this kind of false world where significance is more important than love. And it separates us. And the other one that we see most often is certainty. People want to be certain before they can do something. You couldn't have started a business like you had if you were absolutely certain before you started. You can never build a business with that. You can never build a great relationship because if it's based on certainty, then everybody's got to stay the same and never change, which means you're never going to grow, which means you're going to be miserable. So my metrics are, I want to find out what's driving you. I want to see, is it healthy or unhealthy? You can have two people be driven by significance though and do it with a different set of rules. That's the second piece I measure. The beliefs or rules of how to fulfill that target. But I want, to, I want to be more clear about something. An extraordinary life is life on your terms. And there's two parts. Part one to have an extraordinary life is mastering the skill of the science of achievement. How do I take what I envision and make it real? And how do I do that quicker, faster, better, easier? The ability to manifest what you come up with and make it real, like you've done with your company, yes. that's a skill set. I spend an unbelievable amount of time helping people do it faster, quicker, better, showing them the shortcuts, teaching them the strategies, modeling what works so you, you can save yourself a decade. But I would submit to you that having done this for 38 years with you know 50 million people at this stage, I can tell you that the science of achievement, there are a lot of people that are damn good at that and they still don't have an extraordinary life. They have an extraordinary life, you see it as extraordinary, but I get the phone call from the multi-billionaire right. who tells me he wants to do this thing on his business, but what he really find out is he's miserable as hell and he's hoping somehow I'm gonna rub off on him on that side too. Right. And so I give him what he asked for, the change in his business, but I also give him what he needs, which is the change inside of him. So the second skill is the art of fulfillment. If you want an extraordinary life, you can't just achieve, you gotta be fulfilled. As simplistic as that sounds, but it's an art, it's not a science. Sure. It's a science to making money, come on. Any age, any color, any background, any gender, if you do these things, you'll have an abundance of money. You do these things, you're gonna have too much month at the end of the money, you're gonna have financial stress, right? right? Body, everyone's biochemically different, but you and I both know there's fundamental rules, laws, there's a science to the body. You violate that science, you're gonna have disease, you're gonna have low energy. You align with that, you're gonna have an abundance of energy. It's gonna affect everything in your life, it's a science. Fulfillment's not like that. Fulfillment is as different as our human beings. You want to know what God or the universe likes? Look at the jungle, look at the forest. Right. It's diverse, right. right? So most people think, well, I want to get that because they've been modeling somebody else and that might work on how to achieve something. It'll never work for what to fulfill you. How many people you know, like you, got what you thought you wanted and you weren't fulfilled? Right. And that, I always tell people, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure, the ultimate failure. Because if you go at something and you fail and you're an achiever, you don't fail, you go, I learned something, I'll just try something else, right. I'm gonna still get there. But when you succeed and you're not happy. So a, a perfect example of this, I mentioned in the seminar you were there because it hit me about a, what, about a year and a month ago, we lost what I consider a national treasure, Robin Williams. Mm. And I ask people, how many of you love Robin Williams? Everybody yeah. raising all around the world, right? He made people laugh, people were touched by him. So how good was he at the science of achievement? I mean, he wanted to be a great comedian, make the whole world laugh, he did. He wanted to have his own TV show, he did. He wanted the number one show, he did. He wanted to make movies, he did. He wanted to have an Academy Award for not being funny, yeah. dramatic, and he did it, right? He did it, yeah. He, he, said he wanted a beautiful family. He achieved everything, and he hung himself. That's crazy. And I know recently someone's saying, well, you know, he had dementia, he had drug abuse, he had alcohol abuse most of his life because he made everybody happy but whom? Himself. That's the ultimate failure. So if I had no other message to offer your viewers, and you let me give it to them right now, Please. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe our lives are controlled by one force, decisions. I certainly believe in force greater than myself, call it God if you will, grace, whatever you want to call it, the universe. But I also believe it gives us choices. And the decisions we make control us much more than the conditions we meet. It's not the conditions, it's your decisions. Decisions of what to believe, decisions of what to do, decisions of what to give. I say to people, think about, you know, look back 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago, and think of a decision you made that if you would have made a different decision, you'd have a totally different life today. Better or worse, I don't know, but totally different. The most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're gonna live in a beautiful state. The decision 
to say, I am not going to suffer. That if suffering arises, pain's one thing, suffering's another. Mm. Suffering is when you're like, suffering could be worry, could be anger, could be frustration. It's anything that takes you out of a beautiful state. And right. here's what people don't get. You can end suffering by stop focusing on yourself and focus on something you want to serve greater than yourself. Your children, your wife, your mission, your life. You can get out of it in an instant because the nature of the human mind is to constantly compare things. Your mind, your brain is a two million year old device and it is not designed to make you happy. It's designed to make you, <laughs> it's designed to make you survive. Right. And that's why it's always looking for what's wrong. But it used to be what's wrong is saber tooth tiger so I can protect myself. Now right. people are worried about what people think about them or do they have enough money when two thirds of the planet lives on two dollars a day Right. and you're making $38,000, you're rich. The poorest right. of the poor in our country are considered rich. That's not, I'm not saying they should stay that way. Right. But you can only build on success. My goal would have you consider something. Life is short. We don't know how short it's gonna be. But if you only had a week to live, I bet you wouldn't allow yourself to suffer over a little crap that makes you crazy normally. I think you would probably spend time with those you love, you would do what you love. You'd take on a sunset, You'd smell the air. You would take in everything in those so final true. moments that you possibly do. So my thing is, why wait? Right. Right. Why wait? Why not just decide that if I start to suffer, I know the solution because suffering is me obsessing about me. You might say, it's not me. I'm worried about my kids because they're not doing well. No, you're worried that you haven't done enough for your kids. It's about <laughs> you still, right? Yes. You know, you're worried about what was done or what you should have done or what shouldn't have done. And you can end that in an instant by becoming aware of it and saying, I have made the most important decision of all. Right. I'm gonna live in a beautiful state. Because here's what's gonna happen. Anybody watching, you may lose a family member, you probably will. Somebody may get cancer. Your business may, the government might change the rules. They might change things radically that you can't even do anything about it. You might go bankrupt. You might get divorced. I don't say anybody will, but no, sure. no one knows what's gonna really happen in your life. Life's full of uncertainty, but here's what you can know. You can decide that what happens, you could have a great time. If somebody like Viktor Frankl can be locked up in Auschwitz and come out of that and experience finding joy in the middle of Auschwitz, then human beings have a capacity they've undersold themselves on. We think that the outside world determines how we feel. If, if people have to behave a certain way, if your husband or your wife or your kids or your coworkers or whoever, your boss, has to behave a certain way for you to be happy. And if they don't, you're unhappy, then you're always gonna be unhappy because the more people around you, the more they're gonna change that because they're all human, right. right? My invitation is, as great as it is to achieve, more important to enjoy. Right. And if you can enjoy every moment in that state, when you're feeling loving and playful and passionate and curious and awe, you treat other people a hundred times better than when you're feeling frustrated, pissed off, overwhelmed, worried, stressed, or feeling sorry for yourself. Right. You're gonna be a better parent, you're gonna be a better lover, you're gonna be a better business person, you're gonna have a better life. So my soliloquy is, decide. Decide today and actually say, what if I cut it off? What if I said, I'm not willing to settle and I'm just gonna live in a beautiful state? Doesn't mean you won't feel bad, it doesn't mean you won't stay there, you right. instantly change. But what the hell is success? It's hitting an expectation. And I always tell people, man, trade your expectations for appreciation and it's a whole new world instantly. If you can appreciate this moment, if you can't find ecstasy in this moment, in a conversation with a friend and looking in your wife's eyes, being with your children, going on a run, a phone, if you can't find ecstasy now, I'm here to tell you, more money, more people, more love, more business, more anything is not going to give you more ecstasy. You got, if you can't do it here now, you're not going to do it there when you got more. So why not do it now and, and have a rich life right now? I tell people, Money, that's one thing. Like having financial abundance, there's skills, that's a science. But wealth, it's a decision. It's like, you can be wealthy right now. I, I live in Fiji a good portion of the time. There are these villagers there. They're the richest people I know. They're happy, they laugh, they love. They don't give a damn about the economics. Other people say they're poor. When I first went there, I was trying to do things for them. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm so happy. <laughs> wealthy people come over from the United States and they go travel around and try to figure out what to do. And they're going to spend nine you know, years to do this and this and this so they can finally sit down and be happy. And the Fijian guy goes, why don't you sit on the beach right now, dude, and experience it? Why spend the nine years? Why not have it now? That's my invitation.